Hi, Neil Hansen here. Did you know that there's a 95% failure rate, long-term failure rate when it comes to exercise and dieting? In fact, 95% of people who lose weight will gain it back within five years and many will gain even more weight. Why is that? Why do diets fail 95% of the time? Why does an action plan of exercising and eating right fail? You can get ripped, you can do all the exercise and be really dedicated and motivated to change your body, but eventually you end up right back where you started. Why is that? It was just about action. Once everybody worked out, we'd be done and we just have to maintain it. The reality is there's more to success than just action. It's more than just trying to eat right. Uh, some people might say it's, uh, it's a lifestyle. You have to really get up every day and make that part of who you are. Well, the reality is if you're going to make it part of who you are, you have to change what's up here and the way that you see reality. Well, one way to think about this is to understand that when we experience reality in a negative and a positive way, when we have a lot of uh, meaning to something, uh, there are multiple components that are attached that give life to something that gets wired really strong in our brain. And you can think of it three main ways in which we interpret reality. One is visual, and that's the way we see ourselves. Another one is kinesthetic, and that's the way that we feel the world, but also that has to do with emotion. And then the auditory, which is what we hear internally, which never shuts off for most people, and then externally, what you hear from other people. Uh, but what you hear from other people usually never trumps what we hear internally, the stories that are going on from our past, our internal language and dialogue. And when you have all those together, it creates such, such great context for your current reality. When you try to change something physically, when you go through the kinesthetic movement of exercise, uh, you might change something chemically, which may have an effect on you kinesthetically as well. Uh, you're not really changing the language and what you're seeing. You're depending upon the action to change those two others. If you work out and you do these things, hopefully you'll see something different. And if you see something different, then you'll think something different. Then if you think something different, then you'll feel something different. So you're using the action as your sole mode for change. When the reality is that the, the, the investment that you made with the language and what you've been seeing in your re current reality and what you're experiencing physically... And of course, you know, with all the language that surrounds that, it's habitual, it's locked in, your belief patterns have been reinforced for so long that just doing the action alone doesn't constitute long-term change. So what I always encourage people to do to really see which, is, uh, which pattern is going to be stronger, you can, if you can see what it is that you want, close your eyes and see if you can actually see what an end-term result would look like. What do you look like? How do you stand? What are you saying to yourself? How does it feel to be there? Try to get all the, the, the different aspects of how you interpret that reality. Is it black and white? Is it fuzzy? Is it up close? Can you hear strong words? Do you have a strong emotional connection to it? And then compare yourself to now. Close your eyes and think about how you see yourself now. How strong is the emotion? How bright and strong is that picture? The bigger picture, with the bigger language, bigger emotion, the stronger feeling will always win. That's your set point. The way to change the set point, there's two ways. One is you can dismantle the story that's going on relative to where you are now. Pull apart how you feel about your body now. Figure out the language. I always say, find your BS in the story. What are you making where you are mean? Keep asking what that means until you find that it's BS, that your body means that you're a failure. Is that true? Can you prove that to be true? If you can, what does it mean that you're a failure? You know, keep asking that until you can find a way to kind of pull apart the language and find a, f a falsehood BS in the language. The other way to do that, or in conjunction with that, is to create an idea of what you want and attach emotion to it by asking what would that create for you. So where you're asking to find the BS, you're trying to, on this case, you're trying to find the inspired quotient of that chemical compound, if you will. The visual, see what, what it is that you want to look like. Try to figure out what it would feel like to be in that body, kinesthetically. And then 
as, as you're asking yourself what that would provide for you, continue asking that over and over and over again until you get to a deep core value. So with that, you'll have the language and you have the emotion. But you have to really reinforce that on a day-to-day -day basis because you've reinforced reality and your perspective and the story that exists around the problem for so long that it's hard to trump that without actually going through it every day. So I would say 30 days, you can change the wiring. You can change the set point of where you are. So then when you do take action, the action is in the guise of who you're being and who you want to be in the future. So as you figure out who you want to be in the future, you be that person now, it's so much easier to make the actions last, to make the, the results last. So I hope that helps you in your journey to getting the body that you want and deserve. Thanks for watching.